Welcome to the Wood Violins Custom Shop. We have countless possible instrument configurations for you to choose from. Different models, number of strings, fret options, colors, and more. This is why we like to say, if you can dream it, we can do it. Let's go inside and see what's going on in the shop today. Hey everybody, Mark Wood here. I'm so thrilled to give you a tour of our shop because we have a unique situation out here in New York where the instruments are hand built. We utilize machinery and 21st century technology, but what I love about it is the traditional sensibility that is here, that we are very much emulating what we've done in the 1700s and the 1600s with Stradivarius's in Cremona in Italy, where everything is built by hand and overseen by a human being. Uh, yes, again, we use machines, but again, I really love the fact that we are um, hand built. So you're gonna follow me into the area. Uh, and this is our little office area. And um, we take our orders here. We access, obviously, the internet and technology for our orders. And uh, if you want to follow me into here, I want to introduce you to one of our great creative directors. This is Joe Dom. Hey, Joe. Joe. Hey, folks, how are you? Uh, I'm Joe Domgen. I'm the senior designer and the creative director of Wood Violins. Um, let me give you a brief rundown of what's going on here. Every one of our instruments, whether you have a Viper, Katana, or a Stingray, starts off as a blank of poplar like this. Um, the next stage is, if you pan over here, Jillian is mapping out our trunks. And this would be the second stage, would be looking at one of our trunk lines that has a profile and a side view of it. and they will turn, be turned into a piece like this. Right, and these templates we have, we spent years, Joe, and I figuring out exactly the right length. This is, I think this is a four string, right? That's a five. This is a five string, so the four strings and the five strings are different. Uh, we don't just squeeze five strings on a four string net. We, uh, this neck is specifically a five string, so it's measured exactly to fit comfortably with exactly five strings. The next step is to introduce the Viper neck to the bandsaw. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> there you have it. Viper trunk. The next stage of the game here is we have all of our Viper trunks have been roughed out on the bandsaw. To achieve the final shape, we go over to this piece of machinery here called the shaper. This template here gives the Vipers their final shape. After being clamped to this board here, I run them past the shaper head here, and it gives them the profile they need for the correct fingerboard. Over here, what we have is our various router table fixtures. This is how we achieve our final cuts and our final shape on all of our, uh, our wings. What we have over here is, if you can see, if you recognize this shape, this is the fixture I use to finalize the shape on the Nashville. This here is a base wing for a Viper attached to the fixture. Its next step would be to run past this router head right here and we get the final shape. We've got uh, Jillian is doing the soldering of the input jacks. And I also want to show what's really cool and it really shows you the, the um, puzzle that these instruments are because the instruments are not just a body and a neck as you can see with this viper we've got the two specifically different types of wings and again joe and i worked for for many many years getting the exact right angles on that so that it sits because these angles are set up so that the um uh, the mechanics of the instrument sits properly on the person's uh, body and then you can see with the fingerboard you have all these elements put together to have a firmly playable instrument uh, that is played around the world. And then of course then you can see all these great finishes of these instruments that we are just doing the final setups on them. Uh, this is our seven string. We have our the Barbera pickup on there. We have this special type of tailpiece that is angled so that the pressure of the strings on the bridge is appropriate and workable so that it doesn't fall and then we've got all these great finishes. 
And of course, I want to point out the fingerboard. We also love to do these designs on our fingerboards because uh, the cool factor is very important with wood violins. Basically, I'm just uh, getting ready to bump out the system over here before I put the polish on it. And uh, yeah, just uh, just going past this Beautiful. Right over here. And basically, before and we would do after we do that, we put the wheel over here. Now we have Dave Padula is on our uh, finishing team and he's been with us for almost 25 years and uh, the finishes of our instruments are really important because the beauty of the instrument is critical in the final product. So Dave usually paints in this room. Hey Dave. Hey, how you doing? What you working on today? Well, I'm putting the final color on here. As you can see, these are all ready to be painted. Everyone's a different color. Uh, we can do all the colors you've seen and some you've never seen. So, you know, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beautiful. So we have over here where the instruments dry after they're painted, and these are four different cobras. We have a fretted cobra cello right here. We have a sparkly silver cello four string here and a four string here. Um, and our Dave, our painter, did a beautiful job. As you can see the metal flake, if you turn it in the light, you can actually see different colors of the sparkle and the metal flake. This is one of a very popular finish of ours and Dave has perfected it beautifully. Also, to make your instrument yours in any shape or color you want, we also have chrome tuning gears, gold tuning gears, or black tuning gears. So about 40 years ago, I decided for the first time in history to put frets, steel frets on a violin, which I really felt was important to explore an electric violin, and I'll des uh, describe it a little bit later. But as you can see, we start with a blank fingerboard, slotting them, and then we put the dot configuration on that, and then you can see the final result with these dots placement. I can't tell you how important it is. These dots took me years to figure out the exact placement of them. Additionally, in the, in the frets, we file down the top end where the E and A string are because the strings are so thin that you do not want to feel big uh, road bumps on this. So uh, we really spent a lot of time prepping the fingerboards for the perfect feel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just scoop over to where Joe is and share the laminates. Hey folks, if you wanna step over here, this is where we keep our various veneers. We have some beautiful quilt right here. We also have some, some older burl. We have some nice dark burl here. Get in there, get a good look at that. Absolutely gorgeous piece of wood right there. And we have a few more various veneers here. We have some more quilt. We have some tiger maple. We have some various samples from our dealers who give us pieces from now and then to take a look at. And finally, we have some of our bird's eye and some more really beautiful quilt down there. If you can think of it, we can do it for you, whether I want to or not. <laughs> this is just for the Viper, which is the self-supporting violin that I invented and patented, uh, this uh, floating violin. The chest support system, we've also spent a lot of time in getting the right elements and parts for these, where we have the ability so that the chest support can move freely both this way and this way on the instrument so that when it sits on the person's body it's completely interchangeable and adjustable. This is our line of acoustic electric instruments. We're calling this particular model here the concert standard. Um, the great thing about these is our output jack and our volume control are very neatly tucked onto the side keeping the traditional look of the violin intact. All of our wiring is internal 
So there's nothing noticeable and nothing looks different from an ordinary acoustic violin except for our output jack and our volume control. Thank you.